Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out of the ordinary literature that I've found in my travels, and sometimes I talk about um, stuff that's uh, maybe not quite so weird as is the case it's probably today. It's, it's, it's uh, either or, in my opinion. Uh, it is Short Story Tuesday, so I wanted to focus on a short story about uh, a string of bad decisions in life or possibly uh, having a cursed fate. Uh, again, up in the air, I am referring to Glory by Leslie Nika Arima um, uh, that was published in Harper's Magazine. So uh, for those who don't know, Leslie uh, Nika um, Arima uh, is a fairly new author, uh, although once again it is very, it is very difficult to know if, if, it's, uh, if she just started publishing, getting her stuff published recently, or if she's been writing for a long time and, and people just haven't started um, uh, getting her stuff published until this very moment. Something tells me it might be the latter in that situation. Arima is a Nigerian author um, raised in, in the United Kingdom and currently living in the United States. Uh, she's written various short stories in the past um, and is getting some more of her work published um, today. Uh, and she's won a number of awards. Um, uh, uh, awards focused on... Uh, her as an African writer. So uh, prestigious in, in a big way there. Uh, so she's um, becoming a fairly prominent name uh, with her writing and I can see why her writing is, is very good and I'll talk a little bit more about that later uh, in my uh, review of this short story. So without further ado, let's talk about Glory. I will do a little summary, a little analysis, and we will move on from there. So Glory focuses on Glory be to God Ngozi uh, Akunili. Uh, that's her full name, although she just goes by the name uh, Glory uh, to all of her friends and her co-workers. Uh, the narrator notes that Glory has had a bit of an unlucky life. Uh, when she was born, her grandfather said, uh, much to her mother's chagrin, that uh, she was uh, a cursed one or she had rotten luck or something like that. Uh, and so throughout her life, like, some bad things happened to her. She fell out of law school. She got, she stuck her hand in a dog and uh, in, a, in the mouth of a sleeping dog and, and got bit. Uh, and she ended up lost in a piggly wiggly when she was a young child. Uh, but the narrator also notes that uh, it might not be fate that is dealing with her this rough hand. It might just be the fact that she's bad at decision making. Uh, and, and so she's just making a string of bad decisions, uh, including, you know, getting kicked out of law school because she prefers napping and going out and drinking. And so it, it just might be on her rather than on some external cosmic uh, fate source that that is uh, that is causing her to have this rotten luck. Because of her string of bad decisions at the start of this story, uh, Glory is, is contemplating suicide. She's considering uh, killing herself uh, via alcohol and, and sleeping pills, uh, but she eventually decides against it uh, and uh, just merely highlights how her parents have been unfair to her throughout her entire life. She works as a call center representative, but she deeply, deeply hates it um, because mainly she's uh, making it so people can't get their houses back uh, once they've been uh, foreclosed upon. Uh, so while she is working, a man shows up who is also Nigerian. She is Nigerian, in case I did not highlight that before. Uh, uh, he is very excited and happy, and everyone seems to really like him, and he seems very lucky in life. Uh, and he, he turns his attention to uh, Glory, um, and but she's immediately put off by this, possibly because she feels she doesn't deserve the attention. Uh, but she quickly uh, sparks up a relationship with this man. Uh, and some of his luck even seems to rub off on her, and she begins uh, attending uh, high-class um, high meetings and, and stuff like that. Um, although she is still lying to her parents and uh, uh, 
uh, her friends on Facebook about uh, where she is at in her life. Uh, anyways, uh, Thomas at one point asks if he wants to meet her mom. And she agrees to this, although she notes that she's going to have to, you know, mislead uh, his mom so that she doesn't get the, the proper opinion about her, that she's a, a, a terrible scrub who's, who's going nowhere in life. Although the mom does have her doubts, uh, the, mo uh, the mom does eventually like uh, Glory. And uh, she, the mom starts suggesting that uh, Glory move back to Nigeria. And after Thomas is done with his schooling and stuff, she can be a, a, house or a housewife for him, which Glory Glory doesn't seem to want to do, but she also doesn't want to spit in the face of, of this good luck that's coming her way. And so she, uh, uh, she like looks over at Thomas, and he's like, "Just, just bear with me here. We'll, we'll deal with this when we get to it." So it also seems like he might be misleading his mother about his true intentions as well. Uh, after her, his mom leave, Thomas ends up proposing, uh, and so the story ends with Glory considering whether or not to accept this marriage proposal, uh, noting that she has made a, a, a bunch of rash decisions in the past and uh, that's been due to some level of discomfort and so she's wondering you know what choice to make at this point. In terms of analysis there is a bit to talk about here. Uh, one thing that comes up is the idea of uh, whether or not the these the decisions in Glory's life uh, wh whether or not her the events that are happening to her are due to her bad decisions or due to um, bad luck, cosmic fate that has decided to uh, make her a victim in, in its, uh, its undirected or directed anger in, in this case. Um, Glory is a fountain of, of misfortune, and this has been the case throughout her entire life. Uh, even when she was first born, her, her grandfather was the first to note it. Allow me to read to you a quote from this. That girl has something rotten in her. Her chi is not well. Husband pulled wife out of the room to prevent a brawl. I don't care how old that drunk is, I will fix his mouth today. And begged his father to accept his firstborn grandchild. He didn't see, as the grandfather did, the cowl of misfortune covering Glory's face, which would affect every decision she made, causing her to err on the side of wrong time and time again. When Glory was five, she decided after much consideration to stick her finger into the maw of a sleeping dog. At seven, shortly after her family relocated to the United States, Glory thought it a good idea to walk home with her mother uh, when her mother was five minutes late, picking her up from school, a decision that saw her lost and sobbling in a Piggly Wiggly parking lot uh, before her night fell. She did a lot of things out of spite, the source of which she couldn't identify as if she'd been born resenting the world. And so I think you really get a great picture of, um, of who Glory is uh, from that, uh, what I would say is an opening paragraph. Uh, Glory, um, and it, it also highlights, you know, the fabulous writing on um, Arima's part. Uh, but you, you see that uh, that Glory's made a string of bad decisions, which her which her uh, uh, grandfather attributes to a bad chi or maybe a cosmic fate, you know, not working out with her. He later points out that he he's a uh, like she's angered the gods in some way, uh, but. Uh, uh, she notes, like, how would I even know how to appease those gods? Like, if I don't, I don't want, I barely want to appease the people I work with. Like, so what, what's, um, how can I, how can I make my life better in that way? Um, but yeah, you really get a feeling for, like, things are not going Glory's way. Life seems to have turned out especially rotten for her. And, and later in the story, you find out that she doesn't like her job at the call center. She's contemplating suicide and, uh, like she's lying to people on Facebook about where she works. Things are not not going well for her. And I, I, I do have to respect um, uh, uh, Arima's decision here to paint Glory as such a, a troubled, um, you know, down on her luck character uh like and and for it to be for this down on her luck uh for it to be maybe partly her fault because of the bad decision she's made in life that's seen i haven't really encountered that with a uh with with a writer before um Maybe in, in some areas, but um, in, in movies and stuff, but like in books, uh, I, I feel a lot of the times the uh, characters' actions, like their authors try to justify them or something like that. But here, the writer is, is actively pointing out that, um, that the Glory's actions 
aren't really justifiable at times and have led to, you know, the poor outcomes of her life. Uh, and so I, I really like that. It adds layers to the story and adds layers to, to Glory's character as a whole and, and helps you understand, what, like, where she's going in life and how she might, uh, um, how she might be trying to make her life better and how she could possibly go about doing that and ultimately how she does not go about that path. Another interesting aspect of the story is that of tricking the gods. Uh, her grandfather later in the story uh, uh, talks about a fable where a, um, uh, a porcupine and a turtle were crossing a river or near a river crossing when a spirit shows up and demanded that they both help out. Eventually the porcupine betrays both the tortoise and the, the, the angry spirit and the father's uh, moral of the story that he, that he tells is if you can't appease the gods you can at least trick them into giving you what you want. And that's what uh, Glory takes away from, from that. Uh, if you can't get what you want out of life through the great cosmic fate, you can at least trick the, the cosmic fate or the gods or whatever into giving you what you want through misleading and and um, even straight up lying to overcome your misfortunes in life. That seems to be what, uh, what Glory seems to be doing in this story, misleading her friends on Facebook and her parents, but especially misleading Thomas's mother. Uh, because she, she, when she, her mom shows up, she tells her like, "Oh, my life is is perfect," and her the mom believes that uh, Glory is is working with uh, 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 Thomas to get her MBA or something like that. And Glory is definitely not doing that. But neither Thomas nor Glory bother to to correct her, uh, indicating that Thomas might be in on this to to some degree. You could you could argue that uh, like marrying Thomas. Uh, is the is the great fortune that uh, that would allow um, uh, Glory to live happily, and the god that she has to trick in this case is is the mother. Uh, but this also seems, uh, as I mentioned before, like this also seems to be a thing for Thomas. He seems to be misleading and, and trying to trick the god, so to speak, um, uh, in the form of of his mother, because he's also been telling some mistruths, as Glory notes in the story, uh, that. Um, she, his mom is under the impression that he'll move back to uh, Nigeria, but uh, but Glory doesn't seem to want to do that, and Thomas gives him a look like, "Don't don't argue with this. We'll figure this out later." So maybe Thomas is is misleading. Um, uh, his mom. Maybe he's even trying to mislead Glory in his form of, of tricking the gods, which which seems a bit a bit crueler uh, in order to um, achieve his goals. Um, uh, Arima doesn't go into too much depth with that aspect of the story, but she does hint at it, which I I think is um, a bit clever on on her part. And the last thing that I want to talk about is Glory's choice at the end of the story. Uh, Glory has a big decision to make. She can either marry Thomas or she can reject his his proposal, which would seem to put her back in the same place where she was um, at the beginning of the story, um, uh, where she's kind of down on her luck. And this could be just another instance of her making poor decisions and not marrying somebody when when the, uh, the right person came along, or even like any person who could take her out situation. Uh, so, but the interesting thing is like both choices make sense here. If she chooses to marry Thomas, that is the ultimate form of tricking the gods um, as she's uh, she's mis misled and, and, and lied her way towards a better position in life, um, all through, you know, mo moving around what the cosmic fates had in store for her or something like that. Uh, but if she says no, that also makes sense in the context uh, because th there's another quote that I would like to read to you. But then Glory thought of the first time she had turned her luck with something truly reckless. The thing with the dog. She had felt itchy all over and there was her uncle's dog napping. A thought wormed into her head that the itch would go away if she touched the dog's tongue. And if was suddenly the right and only thing to do. She rubbed the scar on her thumb, thinking of all the times she had picked stupid over sensible, knowing, just knowing she had gotten it right. She, she could not afford to get it wrong this time. She looked at the ring and resentment and elation warred till one overcame the other and Glory made another decision. And the story ends there. It doesn't tell you what decision she made, but it, it does show how underlying all of this, there's the, the thought that Glory has that she knows 
she's making these wrong decisions out of some level of discomfort. Her, like she was itching and she thought, well, maybe if I just do this, uh, like this discomfort will go away. And so since she's aware of that, she might say no. And that might be what's best for her. It might be her overcoming these bad decisions she's made in life and it's not simply taking the easy way, way out in the situation. It could represent um, maturity in, in her case. Although, um, you know, who is to say for sure the story doesn't progress after that moment. So I, I would like to ask you all out there, if you're still watching along, what choice do you think Glory makes? What do you think is the best choice for her? And what choice do you think she ultimately made in this situation? Because I would love to hear from you about this. I think I think there's a lot to be to be parsed from from a, a discussion around that that in that regard. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Glory by Leslie uh, Nika um, Arima, a fabulous short story, uh, one that I definitely recommend to you out there. I will put a link to it in the description. It is worth checking out, and I really love um, Arima's writing because it's it's really compelling, and um, she adds so much nuance and like so much depth to Glory's character in in what is uh, a really short story so um, definitely recommend that you that you check it out at this time uh, if you have something to say about my review or simply want to comment on uh, you know if you read this before let me know in the comments let's have a discussion about this interesting short story don't forget to like share and subscribe I urge you to uh, to at least share this because I, I would love for other people to know about uh, Leslie uh, Nanika um, Arima because um, she seems like a fabulous author and until then I wish you the best of luck and your weird and bad decision-making travels. Farewell.